the mainstream media is not reporting all the arrests that are happening right now, especially human trafficking, child trafficking. They just arrested 36 individuals. I think it was in Missouri or something. I forgot what state. Involved in large child trafficking. They're connecting all of these things. Many of these things are connected to politicians. You will begin, begin to see some of these things, arrest, these people arrested, corporations and businesses. You, people have no idea how many CEOs have stepped down because they were warned. How about over 300? But you don't see this on the media. You won't see what's going on. It says that perilous times will come. We are in perilous times right now. Look at how it's going to be. Verse 2, read it with me. For men will be what? Lovers, Lovers of themselves. That's amazing. Lovers of money, boasters. <laughs> Proud. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. But they're going to have a form of godliness. They're going to have a form of godliness. But they're going to deny the power of Christ because they can't overcome. And from such people, it says, turn away. Turn away. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the, deny the power. Now, you, you got to look at this for a second. Because the word says, as a man thinks, so he is. As a man thinks, so he is. So in this, these individuals are thinking this way. We call it a carnal mind. But a carnal mind is called a corrupt mind. Has everybody got it? It is a corrupt mind. In the eyes of God, a carnal mind is a corrupt mind. Oh, yes. In verse 6, it says, This sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible men, women, loaded down with sins, led away with various lusts. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. In other words, they may know the truth, but they can't come to practice the truth. Now, as Janus and Jabris resisted Moses, so these also resist the truth. Men of what? Of what? Corrupt, corrupt minds. A corrupt mind is a carnal mind. Disapproved concerning the faith. So we see that a corrupt mind is disapproved concerning the faith. The, the connection to this mind, there is no faith. There's no connection spiritually. It's a pretender. It's false. It has, it knows truth but can't live truth. Is everybody okay? It says, but they will progress no further. For their folly will be manifested to all as theirs also was. Form of godliness, the night of power because of their corrupt minds. They have, a, uh, they have um, formed an attitude of self-righteousness by works of the flesh. They formed an attitude of self-righteousness by works of the flesh. And they do this in their own power, not the power of Christ. Because the only power to overcome the touch of corruption is the anointing of Christ Jesus. Amen? So this touch of corruption is brought by evil influence. Touch of corruption. Everyone say, corruption brings destruction. Correction brings, di uh, correction brings direction. Hello? There's all forms of religions out there 
And they, many of them are works of the flesh. There's only one that's not a work of the flesh. That's Christ. But it's not a religion. See, when there's a form of godliness that denies the power and its attitude is of self-righteousness because of the works of the flesh, it has no power whatsoever. There is no connection and relationship at all. And that individual carries the corrupt mind. It is corrupt. All forms of religions are works of the flesh without backed by the anointing of God. It is a form of godliness but has no power. So it's ritualistic. It goes by its own works. You have Buddha, Muhammad, Allah, Scientology, New Age, witchcraft, voodoo. They have no power over evil influence of corruption, but are controlled by it. <laughs> you got Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, Farrakhan, Reverend Wright, and all these are all self- Reverend individuals that have corrupt minds. I'm sharing these names, and I don't give a hoot. Because these are evil men, and they are headed on the way to hell. And unless they turn and repent, I hope they get this message. All self-reverend individuals proclaiming self-righteousness with works of the flesh. They are carriers of a corruptible mind. Corruptible mind. Colossians 2. They've been touched by corruption from the evil influence. So a carnal mind is a corrupt mind. So you and I were born with a carnal, a corrupt mind. Amen? Amen. Colossians 2. Oh, happy days. As a man thinks, so he is. In verse 16, let's speak it. Let no one judge you in food or drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbath which are shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. Let no one cheat you of your reward. Taking delight in false humility, worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind or imagination, and not holding fast to the head who is Christ, from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase that is from God. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why is though living in the world do you subject yourselves to regulations? Don't touch, don't taste, don't handle, which are all concerned things which perish with the using according to what? The commandments and the doctrines of men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. Fleshly mind is a corrupt mind. It has bro it's broken connection to true reality. A corrupt mind is a broken connection to true reality. To be corrupt is to be contaminated. Most of the time it's associated with a false reality, false belief system. They have a false perception. It lacks integrity. It's a liar. A corrupt mind is a lying mind. It's a pretender. They are false prophets, false evangelists, and false teachers. False leaders. Hello? If somebody has to promote themselves, you beware. Hey, I'm prophetess, I'm evangelist, I'm this. If they have to promote their position first, there's a corrupt mind somewhere there. 
I won't trust anyone that comes up to me or calls me and says, I'm an evangelist, this, this, and whatever. Drop the vernacular. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it's a hat, isn't it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Many political politicians are of the corrupt minds. Use as puppets to fulfill evil agendas. And they do it unknowingly, and some of them knowingly. Amen? Amen. By bribes, riches, fame. No power over the flesh of sin. Remember, corruption brings destruction, and whatever it touches, and whatever it touches, it tries to bring corruption. It loves to spread its own disease. First Timothy chapter 6. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, don't get me wrong. There is a time to express the office and there is a time not to. Amen. First Timothy chapter six and verse one. Let's speak it together. Let as many bond servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, so that the name of God and his doctrine may not be blasphemed. And those who have believing masters, let him not despise them because they are brethren, but rather serve them because those who are benefited are believers and beloved. Teach and exhort these things. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain, from such withdraw yourself. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Ooh, happy days. Corrupt minds, destitute of the truth. In other words, they, they, don't, they don't have the understanding. They can't interpret. They can't even, inter you know, they may hear truth, but they can't digest it. Because there's so much blockage in a corrupt mind. And they've touched corruption. All unrighteousness is corruption. No understanding of what is real because they live in a false place, a pretending place. First, uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. You know, we were out doing the, uh, an event, and uh, the guy that run, runs the event, you know, because he does, he's, he's religious, you know, <laughs> There's, the relationship isn't there, you know. So I'm sure that because of their associations of whatever, you know, and so he, he, he calls me Rev every once in a while. And I just let it go, you know. And so the guy that was with us and we were working together, he says, are, are you a reverend? I said, brother, there's only one reverend. And his name is Jesus. Other than that, there's no reverend. Only one reverend. I said, just because I'm a pastor doesn't make me reverent. Amen? Amen? <laughs> and reverence is associated with the fear of God. We reverence, honor, and respect him. You know, I, I don't know. I could never sign my name, Reverend Guy. <laughs> I, just, I just can't do it. I'm sorry. You know? <laughs> the 
There's only one reverend. I just could never, I, you know, just, and then when I get letters from people, reverend such, it's like, oh, gosh. <laughs> Break that. Anyway. What did I say to go? Second Thessalonians 2? Praise God. <laughs> it's amazing, though, when they find out what your title is. Their language changes. <laughs> See, because they were already getting convicted ahead of time, <laughs> and then they find out what your title is. Or if you're a Christian, oh, you're a Christian? Oh, sorry. <laughs> so am I. You're not a Christian. Verse 1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and are gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Now, I want, grab hold of this. Mankind, men of sin, Sons and daughters of perdition all have corrupt minds. Amen. Who opposes and exalts themselves above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he, he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Now the he is me and you. Amen. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. All power, signs, and lying wonders. All power, signs, and lying wonders. Hmm. Lying wonders. And all with unrighteous deception. Everyone say unrighteous deception. Among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Ah, here's the next one. Are you ready for this? For this reason, God will send them what? Strong delusion. Strong delusion. Strong delusion. Man, we're seeing this right now, all over the place. There's strong delusion taken in a global effect. Now, you got to remember something that Jesus came to bring a kingdom, a government. So there's a battle between government right now. There's a battle in the government. There was a coup, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, an attack to have our president to overtake him. Prevent him. They never expected him to win. But God put him in office. He turned the numbers around. Even though they tried to cheat the numbers. God is turning everything around. He's kicking over the tables now. He's the one that's doing everything. And he's using his body and he's exposing those men and women of corrupt minds. He's exposing their wicked deeds. He's exposing. It is a time of exposure right now. And he's putting them under strong delusion because they refuse to turn. That they should believe the lie. And that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through the sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth, to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or our epistle. And now may the Lord of our Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Men and women of sin, children of corruption and perdition, all unrighteous deception, 
because of the touch of corruption. Remember, corruption is like a disease. It likes to spread itself. It's like cancer. It enslaves the soul of a man. It shatters the mind, searing their conscience. Its purpose is to control the thoughts of a human to serve unrighteousness. It keeps an individual in a false reality, a false perception, fantasy land. It keeps an individual in a place of paranoia, fear. I used to be that way when I was out in the drug world using dope and everything else. You kidding? I believe that they were around every corner. They were. <laughs> Somebody was always watching me. They were. But those were demons, not people. <laughs> I'll load the. Never mind. Hallelujah. I finally did cut me loose after a while. <laughs> Mankind. <laughs> the demons never want to cut you loose, man. Only the anointing, the power, the blood of Christ cuts us loose from those things. Amen? To live a life of paranoia is terrible. It's tormenting. 1 Timothy chapter 1. In verse 3, let's speak it together. As I urge you, is everybody there? When I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus, that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine, nor give heed to what? Fables and endless genealogies, which cause disputes rather Godly edification, which is in faith. Now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from a sincere faith, from which some, having strayed, have turned aside to idle talk, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. Now does anybody remember what is the law of life? Deny yourself. Pick up the cross. Amen? Fight and follow. That is the law of life for me and you, to maintain new life. The moment you stop denying yourself, you begin to diminish new life. Verse 8. But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for the sinners, for the unholy and the profane, for the murders of fathers and murders of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. He counted him faithful to put him into the ministry. Although I was formed by, I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Praise God. The law is to expose the touch of corruption. That brings destruction. Amen? Psalm 119. Psalm 
on 119. In verse 1. Glory. Oh, happy days. And the word tells us about praying for our leaders. Amen. When Obama was in office, I was praying for him. I pray he got busted. That's what I prayed for. Lord, bust that dude, because he's a liar and an antichrist. That's the only way some of them were going to get rescued. Amen? It wasn't until I got busted. Last sued by the presence of God. Hallelujah. Some of them will continue on if they don't get busted. Verse 1. Let's speak it together. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Now, what's the law of life? Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. Now, we also know that the word of God is the law, isn't it? Anything God speaks is law. Amen. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with a what? Whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all of your commandments. I will praise you with an uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. How can a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed according to his word. You know how many believers, so-called believers or Christians, don't even read the Word of God? It's amazing how many churches I visited, have visited, and they don't bring their Bibles. They don't even take notes. Everything's given to them up on the board. And they, but they don't write it down. They just, oh, that's nice. And then they leave. There is no training, no teaching. I'm amazed at that. You know, the body of Christ, it says, train, uh, train them up. Equip them. How do you equip people? You got to teach them the truth. But they got to participate. Isn't the price cooperation? So you and I are to cooperate by taking notes. Paper doesn't forget. Who told you not to take notes? Not my dad. Verse 10, with my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as all in riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Oh, hallelujah. I will not forget you. Blessed, undefiled, undefiled is untouched. In other words, you are now cleansed from corruption. You're untouched of corruption. Again, the law of life is deny yourself, pick up the cross, the sword, fight and follow according to the doctrine of the risen Christ. The risen Christ. Again, no, there is no other risen. There's a lot of want to risen, but they ain't risen. 2 Timothy 3. Touch of corruption brings destruction. But the touch of correction brings protection. Now 
in verse 10. You know, as believers and in our relationship with the Lord, if there's true connection, we avoid offense at every degree, whatever level. We avoid offense. Amen? E even when there's correction. We avoid offense. Offense will cause a corruption. Offense is a touch of corruption when you agree with it. It will contaminate us. The enemy always likes, so that's why, do you ever you realize some people get so defensive when there's correction? They all of a sudden want to justify, amen, instead of receive it. So when the Holy Spirit convicts me and you, he's correcting us. Again, I always share, we should be looking for conviction and decisions and things that we're doing. Gosh, was that right, Lord? Was that pleasing to you? Gosh, Lord, I got offended. I'm sorry. Amen? Amen. See, we want to keep that connection. So when we know we got offended, don't let it hang out because offense will turn into a demon and it will contaminate us. I don't like what you said. I got offended. What are you going to do with it? I'm going to kill you. No. You're not. You're not going to react. Amen. You're going to respond. I forgive you and I bless you. Let the coals of fire come on you. Praise God. <laughs> See, we want to turn things over. Let God take care of it. Amen? Amen. <laughs> you know, every day we should forgive everyone, and it should be a part of your routine prayer. Lord, I forgive everyone and bless everyone that's offended me, lied to me, used me, hurt me, rejected me. I forgive them, I bless them, I sever all attachments with them and commit them to your hands. <sighs> Bye. Why? We don't need any more garbage than what we have to deal with every day. Amen? Verse 10, let's speak it. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me in Antioch, at Icium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Y yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. You will be rejected. You will be offended. And you will want to kill somebody. But you're not going to let your will take control. Amen? <laughs> Verse 13. Man, I'll tell you, sometimes I'm watching the news, I want to dive right into that thing. Slap the bejeebies out of that dude, you lying, stinking thing, you. And you can just see the demons in them. Slap the hell of them, right? Make room for heaven. Verse 13, but evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse and worse and worser. Deceiving and being deceived. But you must, everyone say, I must. Continue in the things which I have learned and been assured of knowing from whom I learned them. You learned them from the anointing. And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scriptures given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, for in righteousness that the man and woman of God may be complete, thoroughly what? Equipped. equipped or what? Trained. Thoroughly equipped and trained for every good work. Again, we see imposters. We are wolves in sheep's clothing. They're liars, perjurers, perversion. They're evil. They're wicked. How about a lot of witches and sorcery? Amen? They're going to get worse and worse and worse. Why? Because... Time is closing in. 
The enemy knows he's got a short time. And we're the only ones that, through the body of Christ, it's restraining the enemy. So if he can cause individuals to break, break rank, it causes more corruption to be involved. 2 Peter 2. Second Peter 2, verse 12. Touch of corruption brings a corrupt mind. It says, but these like natural brute beasts made to be caught, destroyed, speak evil of things they do not understand and will utterly perish in their own what? Corruption. corruption. And will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. They are spots and blemishes carousing in their own deception while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery. Read it. And that cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. They have a heart trained in covetous practices, and are what? A cursed children. So a corrupt mind is considered a cursed child. Amen? They have what? Forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but he was rebuked for his iniquity. A dumb donkey speaking with a man's voice restrained the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds carried by the tempest, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the loss of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of what? Corruption, because they have a corruptible mind. For by whom a person is overcome by him, also he is brought into what? Bondage. Remember, corruption is a disease. It is cancerous. It's contagious. You must be careful. For if after they had escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome the latter and is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them, according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit, and a soul having washed to her wallowing in the mire. Wow. A cursed children with corrupt, their corruptible minds. They're unstable. They have become dogs of humanity. And a dog is a demonized individual demonized with all sorts of corruption, leading to destruction, and whatever they do and whatever they touch. Now, it may have a form of prosperity, but it's corrupt. Amen? It's corrupt. So even prosperity, there's a form of prosperity, but it's actually corrupt. And so others associate with that same prosperity and it's but behind it is corruption and so that corruption begins to spread through false prosperity even though it is prosperous amen so that's why people chase money love money the love of money and so forth they they invest in all kinds of crazy schemes out there to prosper but behind it is corruption, and that corruption spreads. Is everybody okay? Ephesians 4. BC, I was involved in it all. You kidding me? If it had to gain cash, I was doing it. And it spread corruption, but do you know what the end result was? Destruction. It always is. Nobody gets away with it. <laughs> Ephesians 4, 17.
Hallelujah. Let's speak it. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind. Why? Because they have a what? Corrupt mind. Having their understanding what? Darkened. Being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to do the work, to work all what? Uncleanness with what? Greediness. greediness. Hmm. Isn't greediness kind of like associated, uh, uh, it's a corruptive prosperity. Greediness. But you've not so learned the anointing, you've not learned Christ, you're not connected. If indeed you have heard him and you're connected and you've been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, then you would put this stuff off, Right? Concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Wow. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of uh, you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the, nor give place to the, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands. What is good that he may have something to give him who is in need. And let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. And don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. They did not learn the truth. In the ways of Christ, the old man will constantly grow corrupt. Amen? Ephesians 2. Oh, happy days. Verse 1. Touch of corruption. Do you ever get frustrated? Oh, snap, yes, everybody has. How long will you stay in it? You stay in frustration long enough, it'll open the door to corruption. Everybody gets frustrated. You even get frustrated with yourself. I mean, we are our worst enemy sometimes. And we're hard on ourselves, too. Because in us, we have a desire of perfection. Does everybody get it? There's a desire in you for perfection, to do things right and pleasing to God. And when you're, there, there's that slight slip, you get angry with yourself. Come on, I know better than that. What the heck? I can't believe I got misled again. I, didn't, I can't believe I let that feel. I can't believe I let that word out. I can't believe I did that again. We are very, we can get frustrated. Amen? Especially if you forget a lot. Oh, snap, I hate that. I got to wear a name tag sometimes, you know? That's my name. That's frustrating. Can you imagine forgetting your wife's name? Oh, this is a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. It's going to kill me when I get home. Praise God. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> but you know, we can allow frustration to, to turn and go deeper and further if we don't stop it or recognize it. You can get frustrated with someone else. Amen. Again, don't let it linger. Because frustration will turn into offense. 
Amen? And then you know what happens after offense? Everything. Hallelujah. All right, where are we at now? One? We didn't even start it yet. Oh, praise God. I won't get frustrated. <laughs> and nobody will get offended, right? Praise God. <laughs> Verse 1. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were idiots, dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, and by his plan you've been saved, called grace, and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us, in Christ Jesus. For by his plan called grace, you've been saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Powerful. Powerful. Psalm 1. Now, as the Holy Spirit begins to minister to us in the area of things that we're still holding on to, amen? amen. Repent. Sever it. Anything that you need to forgive, you need to repent for, do it. Amen? Frustration, you know, reacted, still holding stuff, don't hold it. It will sink you. Psalm 1, verse 1. What does it say? Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now, what's the counsel of the ungodly? What's a, a promoter of? A corruptible mind. Amen? Corruption. Nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. A scornful individual has a corrupt mind. Verse 2, but his delight is in the truth of the law of the Lord. And in his law, he what? Meditates day and night. Verse 3, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall what? Prosper. In other words, there'll be always joy there. Joy. Verse 4, but the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the reward of judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? They will perish. And we'll close at Revelation 21. Touch of corruption. Corruption leads to destruction, and correction leads to direct, gives, brings direction. Amen? Revelation 21, verse 1. Glory. Let's speak it. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Hello. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. The earth is going to go. The heavens are going to go. Everything's going to go, go, and go. But we won't. We'll be with the king. Amen. 
will be home. Verse 2. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. You know, this is when you and I will see God the way he really is. See, you and I can't even handle we, we couldn't handle. I mean, you got to remember something. He holds all galaxies. He holds all universes. His presence would rip us apart. We'd burn up like a piece of paper. That's why we got to shed all the stuff. What we see is glimpses, just glimpses. It's like a drop of water in the ocean. Can you imagine one drop of water in the ocean? Just that one drop in a complete ocean is all we're getting. But what awaits us is the whole ocean. We can't even comprehend that. It's hard. Verse 4. And it says that God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death nor sorrow. No crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. To him who what? Thirsts. Thirst. And he who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I'll be his God, and they shall be, he, he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Wow. Then one of the seven angels who set, had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like the most precious stone, like jasper stone, clear as crystal. Again, we see that the cowardly, the liars, the murderers, the perversions, and so forth, will have no part of the kingdom of God. The word tells us that we will go and celebrate during the millennium, we will go celebrate the tabernacle. And we will, buy, we will pass the lake of fire. So just think about this. There will be people in the lake of fire. Where could that lake of fire be then? It's called the Dead Sea. It will continue to burn. Does everybody understand that? That's why it's called the Dead Sea. It's all salt. Nothing could survive there but it sure can burn. Amen? So it's very possible that the Dead Sea will become the lake of fire, and we will pass it. And we don't want to be in there. Amen? So we must be aware and prepared for the attempt of the enemy to bring corruption. Praise God. We see it all over. Remember, it is contagious. Very contagious. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word, and we thank you that he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. We thank you we can do all things through the anointing. We thank you for your word that won't return void, and we thank you that you've called us 
<laughs> not for your wrath, but you've called us out of darkness into light and rescued us for salvation. So, Lord, we ask for your mercies and grace to continue to abound to us, strengthen us by your Spirit, and position us in the Spirit that we may see things, hear things, all the way through. For your glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name. Nobody said amen? amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.